Hi, this is going to be a quick overview about what DSM-7 is and what it means to you, as well as the top three features I look forward to seeing in DSM-7. We're going to talk about what DSM stands for, and that's Disk Station Manager. It's basically the way that you interface with your Synology NAS. That's when you go online and you've got the entire web interface shown here. The current version of DSM is DSM-6, which was released in 2016. Since then, there have not been any really major updates to the web interface. That is until the beta program for DSM-7 was announced about a week ago. Companies like Synology like to use beta programs because it allows them to work out all the kinks on a ton of different devices without actually putting their users at risk. Basically, whenever you sign up for a beta program, you're saying, hey, I know this could be buggy, I know this could break, but I still want to use it. It also gives third-party developers time to migrate their apps up into DSM-7. If you'd like to be a part of the DSM-7 beta program, I've attached a link just down below about how you can do it. However, I do want to give a warning. Beta programs are notoriously buggy. That's the entire point, is to work out all these kinks. If you are installing DSM-7 beta on a NAS, you should be willing to lose all the data on that NAS. But if you're willing to do this, then it's a really fun way and a cool thing to learn. I have not yet been able to figure out if you can install DSM-7 beta as a virtual machine. If so, that's the only way I'll be able to test it because I've got a lot of stuff on my NAS that I simply cannot lose. Generally, these beta programs last between five and six months for Synology. This is a lot longer than most major OS launches are, but it makes sense when you think about how important Synology data is. Companies across the world are trusting Synology with untold millions or billions of dollars worth of data, and one loss of data is unacceptable for these companies and for Synology. So given this time frame, we should expect to see the final build of DSM 7.0 come out around July. So now, why should you actually care about this software update? It is just an OS update for NAS. Well, I've added the three things I'm most looking forward to in Synology DSM-7. Number one is definitely the speed increase of the web interface of DSM. That is probably the main feature of DSM-7 is the crazy speed overhaul from DSM-6. Anybody who's used DSM-6 before knows how slow it can be. I mean, I've been waiting 25 seconds just to log in locally to my NAS, and opening apps takes at least 15 seconds. It just becomes really hard to use at a certain point whenever you're trying to get something done quickly, and you've got to wait for every single app to open slowly. Whereas everything I've seen about DSM-7 is apps open instantaneously. It's almost like running from a local computer which I think is a huge step in the right direction for Synology, and I'm excited to finally get to use it. The next one, number two, is something no one else seems to be talking about. They're updating the way that you upgrade your hard drive space in your Synology. Say you are like me, and you have a RAID 5 of five four terabyte drives, and it's starting to get full. You would like to upgrade to 10 or 12 terabyte drives, and so you go on Synology and you see how to do it. Well, the official method to do it is to go through and remove each drive one at a time and then go through RAID rebuild for every single one of the drives. Not only is this incredibly slow process taking five days a drive for a five terabyte drive, but it's also leaving your entire RAID at a diminished secure capacity. If you're at RAID 5, you have zero tolerance for fault. And while you're running RAID rebuilds, all the random IOPS on your drives could easily cause failures. So the way that the new update works is how it should have worked forever. Say you have an extra bay in your NAS. All you have to do is plop a new drive in that bay, and it essentially will clone over the drive it's going to be replacing. This means you don't have to do a costly RAID rebuild, you simply have to do a clone. Then, once you're done cloning, boom, you take out the old one, stick in the new one, and it works without a RAID rebuild. This means you can go from taking a month to do a full upgrade to doing it in less than a day, probably.
This is something I'm really excited for because I'm that person. And with these YouTube videos, I'm definitely noticing my space is starting to decrease slowly, 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 and soon I'm going to have to upgrade. I also have two free extra slots that I was planning on using, so that means I will not have to go to raid 6 like I was planning on it to do the upgrades, but I can just do them on my own. Finally, it's the new Photos app. As a photographer, I am really excited for this, as the old Photos app and Moments were awful. They were hard to use, no, the interface did not make a ton of sense, and it was just slow. I would love to be able to share all my photos directly from my Synology to clients, family members, and friends through the web interface that Photos always promised. However, it's a clunky interface that's hard to use. The new Photos app in DSM 7.0 looks amazing. It's also supposed to be really fast. Now looks are actually really important with photography because you've got to get that first impression when a client is first seeing their photos. You really want to impress them at that time and having a clunky interface that they're having trouble using is not going to help that at all. However, having a sleek app like Photos will definitely help that experience. All right, that's been it. Let me know anything else you'd like to make in the comments, and thanks for watching. Bye.